So how dangerous is prostate cancer testing? Is it safe and beneficial or is it risky and without obvious benefits? Welcome to Health Drama. I'm Dr. Bert Vorstman, a urological surgeon and former researcher. And this channel is all about medical truths and patient empowerment. By the way, Health Drum provides material for educational and informational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice. The links to the disclaimer and the material in this video are in the description below. And if you like to get fact-based healthcare information, please hit the subscribe button for me. Okay, so let's get into it and start sorting out medical fact from medical fiction. So the prostate cancer industry heavily promotes prostate cancer testing and screening for all men. But is this supported by fact or is it mostly fiction? So prostate cancer awareness programs commonly make these marketing claims about why men should get screened for prostate cancer. That early detection may allow early treatment, early detection may improve care, may allow better treatment options, may allow better treatment outcomes, and may provide peace of mind if significant disease is not found. Unfortunately, none of these claims are supported by irrefutable and reproducible data. Instead, these many statements are only unsubstantiated marketing claims. Another marketing claim made by prostate cancer awareness programs is that if you have any sexual or urinary symptoms, that this may be an early warning sign of prostate cancer. Now, is that fact or is that also fiction? Now, another common ploy by the prostate cancer awareness programs and support groups is to claim that urinary and sexual symptoms are early warning signs of prostate cancer. Symptoms such as poor urinary flow and dribbling, getting up at night or nocturia, erectile dysfunction issues or pain on ejaculation, blood in the urine or semen. In fact, these are not early warning signs, but simply signs of aging and prostate enlargement. These claims made by prostate cancer awareness and support groups are totally unsupported by irrefutable and reproducible data. And these claims are simply manufactured and fear-based. So are all prostate cancers equal and potentially dangerous? or only some prostate cancers potentially dangerous. So not only is all the marketing about prostate cancer fear-based, but most prostate cancers are outlived. The common grade three within the Gleason 6 lacks the hallmarks of cancer. Most prostate cancers grow sluggishly, taking 40 years or more to reach one centimeter in size from the time of mutation. In men over 65, the incidence of prostate cancer is about 60%, and most of these are low-grade and small in volume. Only about 10 to 15% of prostate cancers are high-grade and potentially dangerous. Again, most prostate cancers are outlived, and not all prostate cancers are the same. So prostate cancer awareness programs heavily promote screening tests for prostate cancer as if they're all reliable. But is this fact or is it fiction? So here's a list of criteria necessary for a screening test to be useful. The test must be highly accurate, sensitive and specific. It must be safe and acceptable to patients. It must be widely available and cost effective. It must detect disease early. It must lead to complication-free treatment that's successfully proven to extend life. Okay, so let's see how the tests used for prostate cancer screening stack up. So we've just seen the criteria necessary for a screening test to be useful. In great contrast, the prostate exam, digital rectal exam or DRE, is highly unreliable and has poor diagnostic accuracy. It is operator dependent, meaning different practitioners are gonna feel different things about the prostate and have different interpretations. The prostate exam has very poor sensitivity and poor specificity and has a high false positive rate. 
Additionally, it fails to detect prostate cancer in its early stages, and all in all, the prostate exam is a highly unreliable screening tool. In fact, the exam simply creates fear and leads to unnecessary and risky prostate needle biopsies. The prostate exam is without evidence for life-saving value. What about the PSA or prostate-specific antigen blood test? Does this meet the criteria for being a useful screening test? So let's see if the PSA test meets the criteria necessary for being a useful screening test. The PSA is not a cancer test. The specific label in prostate-specific antigen is a barefaced lie. It's not specific for the prostate or for prostate cancer. It has about a 78% false positive rate. Some high-grade prostate cancers produce little or no PSA and so will go undetected. The PSA is elevated mostly by benign activities and most prostate cancers are detected because the PSA was elevated by the BPH and not the cancer. So all in all, PSA screening has no survival benefit and abnormalities with the prostate exam and PSA test invariably lead to an unreliable MRI and risky prostate needle biopsies. Remember, the references to all of this material are in the description below. So the prostate MRI is often marketed as a game changer, but is this fact or is this fiction? So the performance of the MRI is far from perfect and carries significant limitations. The MRI does not diagnose cancer. It only shows areas that might be suspicious for cancer. It's associated with false negatives because areas of cancer smaller than five millimeters may be missed some cancers blend with normal tissue or may be anteriorly located in the prostate and difficult to identify. The MRI is associated with false positives such as prostatitis or inflammation of the prostate, BPH nodule, scar tissue, calcification, and so on. As well, studies show that there is often disagreement between radiologists which leads to inconsistent patient management pathways. So continuing on with MRI reliability concerns, the MRI can create a false sense of security in that some significant cancers are missed. The high false positive rate can trigger unnecessary biopsies. The MRI favors detecting the least dangerous cancers, leading to an overdiagnosis of harmless tumors. The MRI is expensive, and the MRI has no proven survival benefit. What about the prostate needle biopsy? How reliable is that test? So almost invariably, patients caught up in the prostate cancer screening trap will wind up having a prostate needle biopsy, either so-called targeted of certain areas in the prostate if big enough, or a random biopsy of the prostate, or both targeted and random. This needle biopsy carries significant risks and complications and is associated with a massive sampling error. Typically, only about 12 needle cores are taken, and when the volume of these 12 cores is measured against the volume of the prostate, only about 0.1% of the prostate is being sampled. In other words, the state of 99.9% .9 of the prostate is unknown. And this is the case whether the biopsy is transrectal or transperineal. As well, there are associated infection risks and sepsis, especially with a transrectal technique. There are bleeding risks such as bleeding from the rectum, blood in the urine or semen, as well as pain and trauma unless the biopsy is performed under sedation. And most small cancers are missed by the needle biopsy. So are there any psychological harms associated with prostate cancer screening? There are significant psychological harms associated with prostate cancer screening that include anxiety, hypervigilance concerning bodily symptoms, relationship and sexual confidence disruptions, 
fear-driven decision-making, and medical dependence as well as repeat testing. What about economic harms? Are there any economic harms associated with prostate cancer screening? Billions of precious healthcare dollars are squandered annually on prostate cancer screening with clinical evaluations, PSA blood tests, MRI scans, prostate needle biopsies, and the treatment of biopsy-associated complications and follow-up appointments. All in all, a gigantic travesty when there is no measurable survival benefit from any of these studies. So does prostate cancer screening save significant numbers of lives? So what's the bottom line with prostate cancer screening? Does it save significant numbers of lives? Sadly, prostate cancer screening fails to save significant numbers of lives. There is no irrefutable and reproducible data that supports prostate cancer screening. In contrast, because of this lack of benefits, prostate cancer screening does serious harm to countless men. So although prostate cancer screening has no mortality benefits, Screening is still heavily marketed by prostate cancer awareness groups, support groups, foundations, advocacy groups, and partnerships. Generally, these organizations are all supported, mostly or in part, by the prostate cancer industry. And when these organizations receive sponsorship dollars from big tech, it represents a major financial conflict of interest. So let's recap. In this video, how dangerous is prostate cancer screening? You learned that the prostate exam and PSA are highly unreliable. The tests drive unnecessary and unreliable MRIs. Screening studies are associated with false positives and false negatives. PSAs and MRIs invariably lead to prostate needle biopsies. The biopsies are associated with significant risks and massive sampling errors. All in all, there are no survival benefits from prostate cancer screening. To learn more about routine medical conditions, self-care, and digital health, check out these other videos. And if you like them, please share them with your friends.